Spidey Arts. Alright. So this week I got something on Amazon because I'm supposed to be my friend. Get a lot of stuff on Amazon. Let's see if you can try to guess what it is. Oh wait, you've probably read the um what you call it. Okay, well, this video. It's epoxy resin. So I don't know if I'm saying that right. It sounds so weird. Basically, I don't know. Um, I was seeing it and like I know last week I said that I'd react to a five minute craft video this week. And I got this. So this is what we're doing this week. I also bought this mold. So I can make like necklaces, I guess. Bracelets, because they have a the little hole. It's gonna be kind of hard. I'll probably have to thread it for a needle to fit it through there. Hold on, let me show you all the stuff. So we have bottle A and bottle B. Oh, they're backwards for you. It's in selfie mode. I find it easier to record in selfie mode. We have the molds. Mixing tools. Measuring tools. Remind me like the medicine cup. Gloves. Box. Instructions. Do they have English? Yes, they do. Alright. Alright. So gotta put on my gloves. It's not focused, is it? There we go. Sorry I look kind of tired. I'm it's Monday after school. <laughs> And this came, so I wanted to, uh, to do it. And these are, like, brand new. I haven't opened them. I haven't used them yet. So I'm a little scared. But y'all are here to help me. Sort of. I mean, you know. You'll be watching this video in six days. If you watch it, then I release it. <sighs> Alright. I did make sure I bought one that is, uh, one part A, one part B. Just to keep it simple for me, because I'm not going to nap. Alright. Let's read the instructions. Please read the instructions carefully and follow the recommended safety measures. That was having instructions. All right, let's get on with the instructions. Okay, so I need to get something to put on my workspace so I don't get epoxy all over the countertop. I have some newspapers I can put down. A contest. So I have these papers that I use as newspaper. <laughs> and I have a pretty surface to work on. Alright, so I got my cup, and don't worry, this paint is not on the inside, it's on the outside. Um, I just never use my cup. Just, I don't know where I put my box for my paint that has all the cups in it. So, where are you going to cup? Alright, we got that. We got our measuring tools. Measuring tool one. Measuring tool two. Crud, I already lost something. I even started. There it is. Measuring tool two. Alright, and my gloves. Okay, so I did a little bit of research and apparently... Food coloring you can use. You can oh, you can use food coloring to dye epoxy resin. So I wanted to make half of mine green and half of it blue. So I actually might need another cup. Hold on. Where is that cup? I know it put somewhere. Got it. Alright. So apparently you only need like one drop of dye for just a little bit of epoxy. Um, 
So I'm gonna do one of them with one drop of blue. And one of oh shoot. I might need gel food coloring. Oh no, we have enough gold ones. Hold on. Alright. I had to go get a gel one. Um though I'm gonna use a liquid one for the blue. I don't know how if these all mix well. That's alright. I'm running at my own risk. If something messes up with the coloring, it's on me. Don't don't blame me, Epoxy, or you know. I'm warning you now. This is not a tutorial. Okay? This is somebody trying it for just trial and error. Not a tutorial. Alright. Sorry. Alright, I need to put my gloves on. Be safe. Wait, before I do that, I want to get some glitter. Alright. Found some glitters. I'll probably only use um green, blue, and maybe silver. I don't know. Depending on what I'm feeling. Alright. I'll get the other glove on. Basically, on the video tutorial that I watched, I mean, this one's not a tutorial, I watched another video, they said that you mix the food coloring in after it's prepared, but before it is, um, uh, before it is, what's it called? What was the word? dry. There was another word that they used. It was like, another word saying prepared or something. I don't remember. Anyway, let's get to this. So, instructions say, resin A and hardener B should be mixed at a one-to-one -one ratio by volume. Getting the measurement right is the most important factor for the outcome of the project. Measure equal parts, resin and hardener, into two measuring cups, then pour them both into a third container to mix. Stir to 46 minutes. Not 46, 4, 2, 6. Alright. Make sure they're nice and close to the camera so you can see it. Focus. There we go. Start with epoxy resin A. Oh, it's got a seal. I get to peel off. I think I'm gonna measure each one of them to twenty milliliters. Actually, no, twenty-five milliliters. That'll give me fifty milliliters. Because then I'm gonna do. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna do 20 milliliters of each. No, 25. Yeah, I'm gonna do 25 milliliters each. This will be blue. I'm doing blue first. Twenty five milliliters of hardener A or epoxy resin A and then hardener B. Let me make sure I can see the measurements. I can even move these out of the way. Alright. Twenty five milliliters. All 
All right. Just realized if I just put my gloves back on, I should probably do that. At least for the point mark. I'm going to use the dirty cup first. Well, not really dirty. So I'm going to start with solution A. I'm now realizing this is actually quite a bit, so uh, I might um, split this in half and dye one half green and one half blue. All right. Well, I'm going to get into the three to four minute mixing. I'll pause the video, save you guys some time. Some time. All right, so that was maybe four minutes. Of mixing, which is enough according to the thing. So, yeah, I'm fine with like a little bit left over on the screen. Um, I'm gonna split it, put half in, into here to dye half of it green, half of it blue. So I got my two cups, cup one and cup two, I'm not going to say A and B because it's like the solution A and harder B. Um, yeah, so now I get to mix in coloring. I think I got it on myself. Alright, this is not good. Alright, I'm gonna go wash my hands. Alright. Oh, sorry, I thought I, saw, thought I saw a hole in my glove. Maybe it wasn't. Alright, so so far this is actually working really well. Turn out really nice. I need to put on some gloves. I'm gonna get some gloves that are my size. Okay, so move that one to the side. I can clean that up later. Put this one there. And I'm gonna get out my silicone mold. Oh, I don't think I should see. I'm gonna 
pause the video. Actually, here we are. I think I'm definitely going to do the circle, just because it's good to go with something basic. And I'll do this oval one here. And if I have enough, I'll do the teardrop. So I'm definitely going to do circle. Hopefully, definitely going to do this one. And if I have enough, to also do that one. So I'm just going to start pouring. I am doing both colors. That's actually really pretty like that. I think I might leave it like this. This one I'm going to like blend in the middle. This one I'm going to leave like that. Just because I think that's really pretty. Alright, let's go on to this one. Oh, oh no, that's not good. Just a bit. Once again, I'm gonna put my gloves on. Back on. Just the other one. I'm gonna get out the other one. Alright. <laughs> I gotta be really careful because I've never done this before. Alright, um, yeah, so, actually I think I'm gonna get, like, a skewer, if it's a toothpick, I don't have toothpicks down here, I have skewers, I can find them. Yeah, that's good enough. I got my paint mixing tool. I'm actually just going to use this just because it's kind of awkward. Alright, I think I do have enough to do the teardrop, and actually maybe another one, or two if I do maybe two separate colors. You can see the teardrop one, right? Sort of. Uh, there we go, it's the one right here. This one. Alright, sorry, phone calling in the background. Maybe I should do a green at the top, a blue at the bottom. Here we go. Okay, that one I filled and it sort of went up a bit. So I might have filled that one too much. I also don't think I filled the teardrop enough. So I'm going to add just a bit more to that one. Yeah, I could actually probably do two more. So I think I'm gonna do the diamond and the heart, maybe. All 
actually I have an idea. I'm gonna try it with the diamond. That's actually kind of cool. It's like there's a ring all the way on the outside. It's blue, and then there's a circle of green, and then a circle of blue, and then a circle of green. All right. And then I said I'm, I'd do the rectangle, right? Actually, I'm going to do this, the name tag looking one, or like the price tag looking one here, just because that one is a. Uh, I dropped a little bit in there. Actually, for this final one, I'm going to mix the green and the blue together. It's actually really pretty turquoise. All right. Do that. I'm going to do the name tag. And I still have enough for another one. I'm going to do the next smallest one, which I think is the heart. I'll do this one. I'll do this one. And I still have more, so I'll do the heart. Probably won't have enough to fill this one. I might be able to get like one layer and have like a thin one. Well, that's all of that and I'll have to let this dry for I think it said 24 hours until I can take it out and then like 72 hours until it's fully hardened so maybe tomorrow or in two days I will take them out look at them show you guys and um yeah so you'll see it in like a couple seconds I'll see you in about two days um, it is actually Saturday. I forgot to record on whenever I took out a few of them. And, um, so now I only have three left in the, in the thing to pop out with you guys. I took out the circle, the oval, and the diamond. I'm pretty sure the teardrop. I did do the teardrop, right? Yeah. Um... Sorry, I'm not wearing my cat ears. I just kind of rushed down here because it's Saturday morning and I haven't edited any of my footage and I'm still recording stuff. So, yeah, let's just get right into this. So, let me change the angle. Okay, so the thing is lined with parchment paper because I was experiment experimenting more with some epoxy, um, which I can show you later. So, I have three more to pop up. Here's one first. Oh, the noise. So satisfying. 
That one turned out pretty good. This one was one of the turquoise ones. Oh, all three of these are. These are all tur turquoise ones. What's this one? These are not that nice. And finally, the heart. This one turned out pretty good. I didn't fill it enough, so it has a little bit of a line here. But it turned out nice. Nice and shiny. Alright, I'll change the camera and go back now. Okay, so... Let me focus on The next day, after pouring these, I went outside, and I looked for some four-leaf clovers. Even though I've actually, I don't think I've ever found one. And right then, I see it. I found a four-leaf clover. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I actually found one. And then, after I found that one, I went out to look again. Because, just why not? And I found a second one, right away. Which is very unusual. I guess I just got extra luck that day. And, um, yeah, and so I decided to put it in epoxy and make either a necklace or a bracelet out of it, out of one of them, because I got a big one that had been, here, I can show you this one, I already put it in epoxy, it's a big one, and it had been, the edges had been cut by a lawnmower, by our lawnmower, focus it. seen like the edges was cut um and so the other one that I found was smaller so I decided I'd use that one to make a bracelet so I put it in the epoxy as well and I found this green ribbon type stuff I was like oh that would make good for like a lucky bracelet so I put it on and I've got a lucky bracelet now stop moving so this one be a little hard to put on. It is 100% waterproof. I used a, a spray adhesive that is not, it doesn't mix with water and it's waterproof. So I can wear this like when I go down to the beach and stuff. If I do wear this, I don't know if I will. Or I could wear it as like an ankle bracelet. Like uh, on my ankle. That'd be a little Anyway, so those are my four leaf clovers. Um, I should actually probably go get... I did make a necklace out of one of these, and I can show you how I did it, but I'm not going to be able to use yarn because I broke the tool I was using. Um, but it's a really common tool. Oh, yeah. Oops, come out with a whole lot of more stuff. So, um, after making four leaf clovers, I had a lot of extra epoxy. So I poured some down on the parchment paper, and I just dumped a lot of glitter into it. This is what it looks like. Well, this is actually a scrap piece. And then I saw it, and I'm like, hmm. And I made a strip out of it. Or like a strip. A little strip. It's like this long. This wide. And I curved it. Because it wasn't fully hardened. It had only been about 20 hours. 24 hours and it takes it for 72 hours to harden and so it was hard it wasn't like liquid but it wasn't solid and so after that had dried I cut it out and then I put it in a tape roll this is a tape roll and then I put my 
strip into it and let that dry for four days and I can take it out and I made a ring. I did put the um the top on the inside just because the outside was a bit smooth or the bottom was a bit smoother. And now I've got like a thumb ring. It actually falls off my thumb though. But yeah. I'll, go, I'll actually go get the necklace this time. Alright, so I got the necklace. There it is, see it? Here it is, I used the old one. I really like the way it turned out. Even though the overlay didn't fill it enough, and there's the line the same way there was with the heart. It wasn't filled enough. Um, but I, I really like it. I think it's cute. It's a little small. It's sort of hard to put over my head once I got it. It's a nice length. And I used yarn, and I have an allergy to nickel. So this won't, you know, won't give me an allergic reaction. Though I still have an allergic rash on my neck, even though I haven't worn my necklace in like a week. Um, yeah, I really like how it turned out. I like just like picking it up and looking at stuff through it. But to be fair, I can do it with all the different shapes. But I personally like, which I'm just gonna leave it on. I like this one. I like this one the most. I was debating over doing the oval or the circle, because I like the way the circle just kind of like cut off and then went to the next color. But I did also like the way that this one sort of faded and how I mixed it in the middle. And I decided on the oval just because it was a bit um, smaller and less heavy and uh, bit nicer, I guess you could say. Now, I'm going to teach you how I made this necklace. I'm not going to use yarn, though, because, like I said, I broke the way, or I broke the thing that I used to make it. Because it's not meant for yarn. But, um... Alright. So, I'm going to be using wire, uh necklace, wire thread, if I can cut it, cut it, okay, cut it, okay, right. here it is, a little hard to see, I'm going to use the heart as an example. Just remove the camera angle down just a bit. Alright. So here's the heart. Basically, I'm going to get once, I'm going to make sure that on the smoothest mm -hmm. side faces upwards and then I'm gonna put one side of the thread in and as well as like that and then one, the other side of the thread also in the same hole if I can get it in there we go my finger is blocking it And then basically pull that almost all the way. We need to leave a hoop here. And then we put these two sides through the hoop to make a knot. Oh, no, I did it backwards. Okay, so put the thread through the wrong side. Put the thread through the side you don't want the front to be. That way it's going into the front. So, like, this is the good side. So we'll put it through this side. 
sorry about my voice, by the way. <coughs> it's, you know, 8 a.m. on a Saturday, and I don't normally sleep, or I don't normally wake up at 8 a.m. on Saturdays. I wake up later. Alright. <coughs> and I'm going to pull it through. And then do the same knot that I did before. This will make it nice and sealed, and that way it's not like going onto one side or the other, and that way it's not like sideways like this. And then basically you tie the knot at the end of the string, or whatever you're using. I'd recommend using yarn, even though it's a little hard to get through. I had to use one of those like needle threading tools to get the yarn through, and you knot it there, and then you've got your necklace. Yeah, well, I think that's all for this video. I do have the, the circle and from here. I used the diamond to make my mom a necklace because that was her favorite. Item. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!